history class 6 chapter 1 indian subcontinent and history do you remember what we learnt in class 5 we saw at some length that there is a close relationship between man and his environment we saw how the changes in the lifestyle of the early man and his technology were related to the changes in the surroundings we also reviewed the history of human civilization from the stone age to the agricultural civilization that flourished on the banks of the rivers history is a coherent account of the significant past events in the progress of human culture time place society and individuals are the four major pillars of history we cannot write history without them of these four components place is related to the geography or geographical conditions history and geography are inseparable history is influenced by geographical conditions in many ways let's do a small exercise observe your surroundings and come up with answers for the following questions our diet clothing housing occupations in fact all human life in any region depends to a large extent to its geographical characteristics for example the life of the people in hilly regions is more strenuous than that of the people on the plains not much fertile land is available in the hilly regions while in the plains it is available on a large scale that is why grains and vegetables are scarce in hilly areas the climate rainfall agricultural produce flora and fauna of the region where we live are the sources of our livelihood the lifestyle and culture of a region develops with their support human settlements have flourished wherever the means of living are plentiful over a period of time these settlements develop further into villages and towns Sometimes reasons like the degradation of the environment, drought, invasions, etc., lead to the scarcity of those means. People are forced to leave their settlements. Villages and towns become deserted. We see many such instances in history. Thus, we see that there is a very close relation between history and geography. Geographical features of India. Our country India extends far and wide. At its north lie the Himalayas, to the east the Bay of Bengal, to the west is the Arabian Sea, and to the south the Indian Ocean. Except all the islands of Andaman, Nicobar and Lakshadweep, the rest of the country is contiguous. Before 1947, today's Pakistan and Bangladesh were also a part of India. this can be referred as ancient india the following regions are seen to be important when we look at the course of indian history the himalayas plains of sindhu ganga brahmaputra rivers thar desert deccan plateau coastal regions islands in the seas The Hindu Kush and Himalaya ranges have created an impenetrable wall on the northern side of the Indian subcontinent. This wall has separated the Indian subcontinent from the deserts of Central Asia. However, there is a land route through the Khyber and the Bolan passes in the Hindu Kush mountains. This route was connected to an ancient trade route. The trade route from China passed through Central Asia and reached Arabia. It is known as the Silk Route or Silk Road because silk was the main commodity exported to the western countries using this road. The plains of the Sindhu Ganga Brahmaputra 
This region consists of the basins of the three big rivers Sindhu, Ganga, Brahmaputra and their tributaries. This region extends from Sindh Punjab in the west to the present day Bangladesh in the east. It was in this region that the earliest Indian civilization of Harappa and the later states and empires of ancient India emerged. The Thar Desert spreads across Rajasthan, Haryana and some parts of Gujarat. A part of the desert lies in today's Pakistan. The desert has the Satluj River to its north, the Aravli mountain range to its east, the run of Kutch to its south and the Is Sindhu River to its west. The Gagar River that originates in Himachal Pradesh reaches the Thar Desert. It is known as Hakra in Pakistan. The region between the east and the west coast of India tapers off to the south. This region has Arabian Sea to its west, Indian Ocean to its south and the Bay of Bengal to its east. A region thus bound by the sea on three sides is called a peninsula. A major part of the Indian peninsula is occupied by the Deccan Plateau. The Sayadri mountain ranges are to its west. They are also known as the Western Ghats. The mountains on the eastern side of the Deccan Plateau are known as the Eastern Ghats. Deccan Plateau has fertile land where many post Harappan agrarian cultures flourished. Deccan Plateau was a part of the Maurya Empire, the largest in ancient India. From the time of the Harappan civilization, ancient India had trade relations with western countries. This trade was carried on by sea. Therefore, India had developed contact and interaction with foreign cultures and people at the sea ports. Later on, land routes came to be used for trade and transport. But the importance of sea route did not diminish. Andaman and Nicobar are the Indian islands in the Bay of Bengal. Lakshadweep is a group of Indian islands in the Arabian Sea. The location of these islands may have been important in ancient India trade. The manuscript, the Periplus of the Eritrean Sea or the Handbook of Red Sea makes a mention of Indian islands. It has been written by an unknown Greek sailor. The cities of Harappa and Mohenjo-daro are in today's Pakistan. Afghanistan, Pakistan, Nepal, Bhutan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Maldives and India together form the region known as South Asia. Considering the expanse and significance of India in this region, it is also known as Indian subcontinent. The Harappan civilization had spread mainly in the northwestern part of the Indian subcontinent. As an exercise, answer the following questions. Thank you children. Please drop in any questions you may have.